Hello everyone. Today we're going to be exploring Gdansk, Poland, and I'm going to show you how to spend 48 hours there. We'll go over where to go to find amazing Polish dumplings, where to learn about Poland's key role in World War II history, where to see gorgeous architecture, and even where to take a dip in the Baltic Sea. If you're new to our channel, we're working professionals who love to travel. We focus on travel reviews and tips so that you can make the most out of your annual leave. If you like our content, consider liking and subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out. So let's get started. Gdansk is located right at the north of Poland on the Baltic Sea. It's about four hours north of Warsaw, five and a half hours north of Krakow, located in a region called Pomerania. Gdansk is easy to get to for a city break. There's an international airport located only 20 minutes from the city center where you can easily get a taxi, bus, or Uber. It takes about two hours flying from London, so I arrived after work on a Friday to maximize the weekend. I started the first morning out with a traditional Kashubian breakfast at this cute breakfast and coffee place, Kafebe. Kashubia is a language region of Poland, and it was really fun to try out this hearty breakfast to start the day. Part of the charm of Gdansk is just walking around the old town. Gdansk has been around for over a thousand years, but was 90% destroyed in World War II and rebuilt after to reflect its heyday. The streets around the river are worth exploring, but make sure to see the Long Market, or Dugi Targ, which is the center of the city and home to many shops and restaurants, including Neptune's Fountain. Stop by the Old Armory. From here, you can also plan your visit to St. Mary's Church, the largest brick church in the world, which has a tower you can climb for the bird's eyes views of the city. Unfortunately, it wasn't open when I was there, but the pictures look absolutely amazing. You can also go through the Green Gate on the end, a bit out of Old Town, and see the Torture Room and Prison Tower, which was in use for hundreds of years. You can still see some of the remnants of that history from the outside, but if you go on the inside, it's now an amber museum. After a morning of walking around and exploring the city, refuel yourself with a stop at Mandu, which is a must if you want to try traditional Polish food called pierogies. This place was highly recommended by locals, and it's a good portion size for the price. For the equivalent of about five pounds, you can get 10 homemade pierogies in all sorts of different flavors. After lunch, I wanted to go to the World War II Museum. I'll talk about that in just a minute, but the walk from Mandu to the museum is easy, only about 15 minutes, and takes you a bit outside the old town towards the east, so you can get a feel for what the rest of the city is like. Soon after, you arrive in the World War II Museum. While museums aren't always my favorite thing to do in a city, for me, this is absolutely one not to miss. It's very well done, interactive, and tells the full story of World War II in Poland. Gdansk is actually the place where World War II officially started in Europe, with the German attack on the Polish military at Westerplatte. And as I mentioned before, the city got almost completely destroyed in the years that followed, before ending the war under communist rule. This museum tells the story in such a moving way, and I'd really recommend making this a vital part of your itinerary. After taking a bit to recharge and get ready for the evening, we went to a delicious, okay, non-Polish, dinner at Mono before ending the night with drinks at this cool, underground, speakeasy-style bar, Flissack 76. This bar was a hit for me. They change their menus every year and really go all out in their menus with telling a story. In 2022, it was fairy tale themed, so the menu was like a pop-up book and every creative drink had a story and a theme. The drinks are about five pounds each and the experience was really unique. Starting day two, we began with the tip we had gotten from a local, which was to see the view of the city from the top of the hill called Gora Gradova. You can get there walking, or in our case, running, which is a bit faster. At the top of the hill, there are remains of a 19th century fort with exhibitions in each bunker, and you can also see the Millennium Cross Monument up close. From here, you can walk back towards the old city and see a bit of the northern part of the old town this way as well. By this time, it's probably not the first time you've walked past Mariaka Street, which is one of the most picturesque streets in Gdansk, and what you probably usually see photos of. It's a very charming street with intact terraces that now has a bunch of restaurants and, of course, amber shops and stalls, something that Gdansk is famous for. On Mariaka Street, there is a popular cafe called Drukarnia, which came highly recommended. 
The Modern Space does serve delicious coffee, and they also have a selection of sandwiches and smoothie bowls as well. The Gdansk Old Town itself is fairly small, and we had walked around much of it on day one. However, Gdansk is part of a tri-city area, which includes the cities of Sopot and Gidnia as well. We decided to use the day to go explore the other areas. I wanted to get a small hike and some Baltic Sea in, so we decided to start near Gidnia. There is a bus and train that you can take to get out here, but taking an Uber was only nine pounds for a 30 minute drive. The Uber dropped us off at Kalibki, which is in the southernmost part of Gidnia. From this beach, after grabbing a coffee there at the little shop, you can walk to the left and go up the Orlowski Cliffs for a short 30 minute hike round trip up the cliffs overlooking the sea, through a small forest and back. It was a sunny day and the place was full of people with the same idea. Once back on the beach, you can have a walk out onto the Orlowo Pier, extending into the Baltic. You can actually walk from here south to Sopot if you have a couple of extra hours. In the interest of time, we walked just a bit before catching the Uber down to the popular seaside town of Sopot. Apparently, in the summers, this is one of the best Baltic beach destinations, with a wide strip of golden sand and a busy modern resort town full of bars, restaurants, and things to do. Before heading back to Gdansk for the evening, we grabbed a late lunch at Fidel, a Cuban restaurant and rum bar. After a quick rest, we began the night out at a very cool and unique bar, Visniewski, which only sells one thing, a local cherry liqueur that you can choose to get either hot or cold. The bar is tiny and gets super popular, so this Sunday evening visit was just perfect. The next stop just across the street was Lumi Shop Bar, a fun spot in a tiny downstairs bar that seemed to be very popular with the locals. They have hundreds of cheap, creative shots such as dessert shots and flaming ones. We went back then to the riverfront in Gdansk for dinner at Goldwasser. While it might be a bit touristy, the food was absolutely delicious, the ambiance is really unique and cozy, and of course, they had the last drink I knew I needed to try here on my list, the famous Goldwasser. Goldwasser is an herbal Polish liqueur that has been around for hundreds of years and has the signature gold flakes floating around in every glass. We spent the next morning with a little swim and relaxing at the rooftop of our hotel, the Hilton Gdansk. The Hilton also has a rooftop bar that's open to the public where you can get these same sort of views. We still had a few hours before our flight, so we went to check out the European Solidarity Center. This museum picks up where the World War II museum left off and talks about the history of communist rule in Gdansk and Gdansk's path out from under that. By now, you've likely seen the gorgeous riverfront in Gdansk multiple times, but of course, make it a point to walk around the riverfront while you're there, with its beautiful architecture and plenty of busy, modern, and traditional restaurants on both sides of the river. I hope you've enjoyed coming along to Gdansk with us today. Please let me know in the comments below if you've been to Gdansk and what else we could include in a future weekend visit. Thank you for watching and see you on the next trip.